，各位板鹅东的居民，各位同胞，大家晚上好。很感谢大家抽空出席工人党的群众大会。Good evening, fellow Singaporeans. Good evening, voters of Bongo East. The PAP campaign in Bongo East seems to have taken a different turn at the weekend. Last Sunday, as some of you know, I bumped into Dr. Ko Po Kun outside St. Anne's Church, next to St. Joseph's Convent. He seemed friendly. Running his own campaign, being his own man. After I left the church, I went to do house visits, and surprisingly, ran into quite a number of PAP MPs in the area. MPs not just from neighbouring Pasiris Pongol GRC, but even from the west as well. Some were visiting residents; others were wandering around food courts. After lying low for half the campaign, and leaving the campaign to branch activists, the PAP has suddenly decided to wake up and take you seriously, dear Pongo East voters. This is the point to note: the PAP will only take you seriously when their feet are held to the fire. Tonight, I would like to spend some time talking about an MP's work in town council management. I will deal with some broader issues and leave it to Lilian to talk about her priorities for Pongo East. MPs in Singapore manage town councils and HDB estates. Under the Town Councils Act, elected MPs are to manage and improve the common property in the town, which includes roofs, lifts. And the common facilities. A large part of a town council's income comes from the residents, by way of S and CC or service and conservancy charges. Town councils also receive government grants, which are funded by taxpayers. Being custodians of such monies, MPs should use town council funds to advance the resident interests and not for partisan advantage. At GE 2011, the Workers' Party won Aljunied GRC, and the Aljunied MPs appointed me as the chairman of the new Aljunied Aukang Town Council. Being chairman of AHTC has indeed been an eye-opening experience. For the first time, an opposition party was able to dig into documents. Showing how the PAP town councils have been managing HDB towns, while many of the systems and processes were sensible, there were other aspects that showed how political town management had become. It has gotten to the point that residents may become pawns for political gain or simply collateral damage. For instance, I have come across a few contracts signed by town councils carrying a clause. Allowing for termination of services if there should be a change in the composition of the town council management, i.e., a change of political leadership. In other words, if a PAP ward is lost to an opposition party, the contract may be terminated within a short time. Let us pause for a moment and ponder: Why is there such a clause in town council contracts? I have been cracking my head over this. Will the service provider be unable to perform just because the MPs have changed, or is the clause there in case constituencies are lost by the PAP to trip up the incoming opposition MPs? And do they want to trip us up so much that they do not consider the possible disruptions and suffering inflicted on the residents? How is such a clause in the public interest? I have asked this question publicly several times in recent weeks, and I have not seen any convincing answer so far. Many of you may have been following the recent issue raised by us concerning the sale of computer software owned by the PAP town councils to a company called AIM, Action Information Management Private Limited.
you all seem to know a lot about AIM, okay. <laughs> I shall call it AIM for short. This sale of software took place a few months before GE 2011. AIM is not just an ordinary company, but a company fully owned by the PAP. Interestingly, AIM's paid up capital is only $2. But the PAP Town Councils assess that AIM was a safe bet to deal with as it was fully backed by the PAP. Even though the software systems had been developed at significant cost with public funds, the PAP Town Council decided to sell the ownership of the systems, transfer it to their own political party. AIM was also allowed to terminate the software agreements with any town council on one month's notice if there was a change in the composition of the town council management. So, what is the big deal about terminating the software agreements for any town council? Well, that's like sending soldiers to battle, but removing the ammo when they are in the field. The software systems cover a host of critical functions, such as collection of payments, processing of works orders, arrears management, property information, and the cyclical works system. Terminating all these without replacement will practically grind the town council operations to a halt. Luckily, our Workers' Party soldiers could still fight because WP had an old ammo dump in Aukang. Some people have asked why we did not make this issue public earlier since we knew about it since 2011. Some PAP members even said we were using AIM as an excuse for town council problems. Well, the reason why we did not raise it earlier is simple. After the general election, we were simply obsessed with taking over the town council under a tight timeline with minimum disruption to our residents. We had also gotten help to have a one-month extension from AIM and did not want to jeopardise that. After that, we were just too busy getting things up and running for the first year. But when the Ministry of National Development announced in December that our audit process was taking longer than other people, we had to explain the reason for the delay. Since the AIM issue became public, there has been a lot of public questioning about the role of town councils and the AIM transaction. Even prominent citizens like presidential candidate Dr. Tan Cheng Bok voice grave concerns. The questions centered around how a system developed with public monies could be sold to a political party, allowing it to terminate the system with one month's notice for possibly political reasons. I even had taxpayers from private estates asking me whether the government grants to town councils were being wasted by having to replicate software systems which had been terminated. Various PAP representatives and the chairman of AIM tried to give some explanation, but key questions were still unanswered. I therefore decided to force the issue in Parliament by filing an adjournment motion on the afternoon of Tuesday, 8 January, on the topic Safeguarding the Public Interest in Town Council Management. A few hours later in the evening, the Prime Minister's office issued a statement that he had directed the Ministry of National Development to do a broad-based review, examining the AIM transaction and the fundamental nature of town councils. The PMO statement said that the government needed to satisfy itself that public funds were safeguarded and residents' interests were not compromised. 
This action by the Prime Minister marked a turn of events. Since the PM had seen it fit to order the review, the Workers' Party considered it in the public interest to allow the review to proceed first before taking up the matter further. I also indicated that our town council would give its input for the review as we are likely to be the ones who can offer a fresh perspective on the issues. I have also said that we will consider whether to take the matter up in Parliament again after the review findings are known. Dear Singaporeans, this episode illustrates the way Workers' Party works. We will press the government on matters of public interest using all tools available, including the parliamentary process. At the same time, if the government recognises the problem and takes some action, we will want to allow it the opportunity to put things right. This also illustrates the value of political competition in furthering the public interest. Dear friends, we only discovered the AIM transaction because we had been elected as MPs of our unit GRC. We had the opportunity to come by the information. When I was a young lawyer, one of the things I learned about questioning witnesses is that you can only be effective in cross-examination if you can confront the witness with specific evidence. It is the same with checking the government. We need specific information to question them. Unlike in other countries, citizens in Singapore do not have freedom of information laws to compel the government to reveal information which it deems sensitive. Voting for a non-PAP MP will promote good governance. It will provide more avenues to press for transparency and accountability. Recently, DPM Teo Chi Hien criticised the Workers' Party for using a by-election strategy in Pongo East. Well, this is a by-election, isn't it? Dear Pongo East voters, voting for Dr. Ko Po Kun will be voting for more of the same. Not right enough of his ilk in Parliament. Instead, vote for greater accountability. Vote for a parliament which better represents who you are. Vote for Lee Li Lian. Vote for the Workers' Party.